Hey, Christopher. Hi. So, whenever you think about the future of humanity, what do you see? Uh, I, I can give you some questions that I help you. Do you think there'll be more languages or less languages than there are today? So, less is used when you're talking about something that's, like, qualitative. Fewer is used when you're talking about numerical stuff. Okay. Uh, do you think there's going to be fewer or more languages uh, in the future than there are today? I think there will be fewer. fewer. If any. If any? Yeah. Tell me more. There are lots of existential risks out there. Oh, you're Unchanged. talking about, like, the end of humanity? Yeah. I mean, it's either probable we're going to be a space-faring colony, colonizing species or extinct. So. Well, that would uh, help to explain the Fermi paradox. Uh, you know, the great filters, those type of things. Yeah, that would explain that. Or, you know, there's other some other species that's systematically exterminating them. Hmm. It would also be a answer to the Fermi paradox. Are, you know, civilizations that start emitting radio waves uh, get more and more um, um, efficient with their communication, they stop bleeding out techno signatures. Yeah, it seems really foolish to imagine that in the future they're communicating via radio waves. Hmm. Like more laser. Well, I mean, lasers are still like light. I mean, they might not even be using light. Maybe they've like... I don't know. I don't like know enough quantum en entanglement type of thing. Yeah, I mean like... Light is still, you know, constrained by, like, the speed of light, which is pretty slow. Um, how, yeah, with the quantum entanglement, apparently it's, like, instantaneous, which is kind of interesting. I wish I understood more about entanglement. I wish I understood more quantum physics. Um, so, you think there's a real risk that humanity may not make it? Yes. And, um, like... What what gives you that sense of that risk? Like, do you remember when you first had that feeling that humanity went? When I it? understood what anthropomorphic climate change was, and where I saw iRobot, 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 contact. Yeah. But uh, I mean, iRobot, the humans went at them. I mean, and I don't understand. See why they should. Why they should? It's like just a good storytelling. Like, Will Smith should have lost that. But how about a contact? I mean, it, it seemed okay contact i mean like these are su extremely superior beings they decide you know oh these really aren't sentient beings at all <laughs> hmm. i mean imagine you fail that test and they're malevolent you end up dead or you know it could be like us and dogs and cats you're like oh look at that little cute little human yeah. or us and wasps you know like oh they're about to start stinging us oh my gosh yeah uh, they you trying to kill the hive if you think their nuclear bombs are bad imagine they'll come up with the next exactly oh my gosh um, so, okay, uh, we have us killing ourselves and eventually other, uh, possibly other people killing us. Those are like the two threats we see. All right, what about general artificial intelligence? Do you think that's like us killing ourselves or do you think that's us killing ourselves like accidentally? Well, I mean, I think, you know, if you're thinking about something that we made killing us, even if that thing became conscious, I would say that'd still be us killing ourselves as opposed to a consciousness that developed completely independent of us. Sure, I mean, I think the sole risk to us is us killing ourselves, or us failing to mitigate some other threat to us, like, say, an asteroid, and us not, like, taking the necessary precautions to, like, prevent it from killing us. Oh, so, okay, assuming you could work your magic and change the priorities of humanity, um, what would you do? What would you change? I mean, I think climate change is, like, the biggest existential threat of our time. It's like a risk magnifier. Also, I think, like, the weak models, like the, you know, like, the YouTube recommendation system or, like, the Facebook algor algorithm is, like, these are really stupid models that, like, are intent, like, don't have, like, a complex understanding of what humans actually want. And so they're, like, optimized, for, like, just dopamine hits. And they're really effective at getting those dopamine hits to people. And so this is, like, already, a, like, a weak version of, like, the Bostrom, like, paperclip-making AI and I think that's, like, these are both, like, huge existential risks that I don't think people t take seriously enough. And they're more worried about, like, these longer-term problems that, like, we won't get to because we're going to be dead because of these problems. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the Internet and those uh, algorithms are relatively uh, new problems. Like, things that have kind of happened in the last two decades. 
Yeah. The, I mean, this is the first time 7 billion humans have been alive, or 8 billion humans. I mean, the amount of progress we're making on a daily basis is like more than we've made in like centuries ago, in years. Like, I mean, like every year, like a, like a century ago, it was like the, basically like the economic equivalent of like a week now. In terms of just like general productivity, like research papers produced, the science being done, the manufacturing capacity that we have now. But I guess how come that doesn't give you great hope that we could actually solve these problems? Because we're not. <laughs> like, I mean, there are like self fulfilling cycles that once are like are set off. Like, for example, like the albedo of the earth. Once it declines past a certain point, like it becomes self reinforcing and like it's impossible to like reset. Um, like, we are now reaching a point where the decisions we make change society in a way that is, like, irrecoverable. And we've never been in that position before. Like, we've never, like, taken, like, can take actions that, like, change the world in a fundamental way that are, like, irrecoverable. Like, we can't recover from. And you're thinking about, like, nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. That, that was probably the first one that we invented. But you know, we, we can't recover from. Now it's like weak AI or going to soon going to be strong AI and then climate change. I mean, all these things we cannot recover from. But, um, I mean, don't you, don't you think, uh, like, uh, the major source of climate change, what would you say it's methane, uh, sorry, um, carbon in there or something else? Yeah, but it's not even, like, at the consumer scale because, like, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, like, this, like, lockdowns, Emissions only dropped by 7%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like everybody was staying home and people weren't going outside, which means like really from the consumer side, it's like impossible to actually like change these systems. It has to be like really big governmental policy. Well, but I mean, uh, do you think it's like carbon in the air or something else? It's carbon in the air. But right, it's, it's, a, it's not a, like a market failure. It's a policy failure, which mm -hmm. means there has to be political will in order to like incentivize people actually taking out the carbon or else developing the technologies. Like, I, I think we have the technology to, like, make this work. It's just, like, I don't think the political will is there to, like, actually see it through. I mean, have we developed a way to uh, take the carbon out of the air and reuse it? This is, like, not a technological problem. This is a very dumb problem that, like, is completely politically, uh, it's, like, political in nature. Like, I, I don't think improving our technological abilities here actually changes anything. It's like saying, like, you know, sure, we could design, like, better nuclear weapons. But, like, the problem is not whether we have better or worse nuclear weapons. It's how we use the nuclear weapons and, like, us restraining our usage of it. Well, so you say it's a policy problem. Well, what do you mean? Like, what policies would need to change? So, I mean, I, I think we need governments to heavily regulate. Like, the purpose of governments is to manage externalities of companies. Companies cannot be assumed to manage their own externalities. So there needs to be a, a very high price on polluting the public and, like, the emission of carbon dioxide. Like, so, you know, like, uh, the products that we buy need to reflect the emissions that they, that went into creating that. And, like, you know, if you're able to, like, d like take out emissions from the air, you know, what you're suggesting, like, the capturing concept, then, like, you can use that as a rebate for products. And so, like, companies that are net negative can actually, like, have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. And that, that can be reflected by, like, the market. So how about, um, you know, the, the bottle deposit? I mean, would you say that's an effective policy? No. No? No. Uh, tell, me, tell me more. Look, I mean, like, the price of producing one of those bottles is, like, quite high, actually. Like, it's not worth five cents for one of those plastic bottles. The cost to the public and the common good is, like, much higher. Like, the emissions produced leads to, like... birth defects in the way of, like, um, carcinogens being put in the air and, like, can lead to, like, increased rates of, like, um, like, lung disease and pulmonary problems. I mean, there's actually a huge cost associated with it, and the price of the bottle is not reflective of that huge cost. It's, hmm. so, like, the five cents that you get for, like, the plastic in the bottle, sure, whatever, good idea, but, like, it's, like, poorly executed. But uh, do you think, like, the, the major source of carbon errors from um, energy production or transportation or manufacturing? Like, what, 
What do you think is the ma major source? I think cement is like, cement production is like 20% of global emissions, actually. I think cement production is actually really large. Hmm, why, why does cement uh, release carbon? Um, I think it requires carbon to like, I'm not precisely sure why it requires, like, why there's so much carbon dioxide released, but it's really, really intensive, actually. And so, like, yeah. And then energy production is also very high. It's, like, another 20%, I think, 30%. So, like, mm. you know, we switch to renewal, like, we need more nuclear power. But, like, that itself is not really a good solution. Because, like, you know, when the security situation deteriorates, you have these huge nuclear disasters. Right? Like, Chernobyl was just recently taken over. Mm. Um, you know, there was other other nuclear power plants that were taken over you know those those could have been disasters so like and like the half-life is like hundreds of thousands of years you know obviously like, i don't even trust us for the next hundred years i can't imagine trusting us for the next hundred thousand years so like nuclear presents its own unique problems i don't know what the solution is i mean i guess renewables but like those are two that fuse like diffuse to like actually i don't know hmm. Hmm. So what do you think about base uh, space-based solar power? Sure, it's a brilliant idea. I could see it going very wrong, and, like being used by malicious actors. But like you know, like some type of beam weapon. Yeah. Kind of thing. you know, a targeted like ability to destroy whole cities without the potential for nuclear radiation. I could see malevolent actors using that. Hmm. Uh, what do you think about humanity eventually? Um, growing beyond the Earth and being in multiple spaces in the solar system is, you think that's like a realistic uh, eventuality, or you think that's just like uh, science fiction and will forever just be here on the Earth? I think it's very realistic. We don't kill ourselves in the next hundred years. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the atomic bomb was what discovered in the early nineteen forties. Yeah, but I mean, we're already seeing like. South Korea is debating whether they should start a nuclear weapons program because of the invasion of Ukraine. Taiwan is, wants nuclear weapons now, so that way they don't get invaded by China. Right? Nuclear non-proliferation was very successful because we had these non-aggression agreements made with the return, like with smaller countries, like voluntarily relinquishing their weapons. Did you say South Korea? South it's Korea. South Korea. It's, it was considering pursuing a nuclear weapons program because of the invasion of Ukraine. And uh, South Korea is uh, afraid of North Korea or China or other things? I guess both. I mean, I'm not really sure what their logic is. Maybe China? But mm. I mean, I mean, I think the Budapest Agreement, it was. Russia agreed never to invade Ukraine if they returned nuclear weapons, if they returned their nuclear weapons back to Russia. Hmm. And that was violated. Oh, I mean, when, when was that agreement? I think it was the 1980s or 1990s. 1990s, I want to say, 1992, Budapest Agreement. Yeah, 1994. Security assurances to the signatures to the ascension of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Ukraine, to the Treaty of Non-Proliferation, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the Budapest Security Agreement. Security assurance. Hmm. I mean, had Ukraine, you know, retained its nuclear weapons, I don't think you'd be seeing the invasion by Russia right now. So, now states have an incentive to go acquire nuclear weapons, which they didn't have before. Like, South, South Africa had nuclear weapons, which they relinquished. I don't know. Seems scary. I mean, Taiwan now probably really wants nuclear weapons. Hmm. Uh, so, I mean, how do we get to a situation where people feel secure again? I don't know. Building good consensus? Dictatorships? Dictatorships? Maybe. I mean, isn't it the problem with, like, uh, Russia and China is that uh, very few people control it, and the rest are, are kind of locked down? China has a problem. I mean, China seems like a good society right now. Not to, like, live in, but to, like, you know. These are very heady problems. What does that have to do with space? Yes, I think space will be good. Space good. 
<laughs> go space. I like foundation. I like the idea of a galactic empire. Uh, would you take a trip to space if it was safe and affordable? You know, there's really not much to do in space. So would this be like a return journey, like a round trip, or like a one-way? Uh, ra- I mean, whichever you prefer. Yeah, I mean, if it's round trip, I see no reason why not to. How how far would you go? Like one of these suborbital 15-minute things? Or would you stay in orbit a few days? Or would you go to the moon for a week and come back? I'll go to the moon for a week, a month maybe, come back. How about uh, Mars for a few years? For a few years? I don't know. Well, I mean, it take you six months to get there. No, you have to wait no. two years for the orbits to align, six months to get back. Hmm. Uh, there, there has to be, like, a culture on Mars by then. Like, like a Las Vegas type of situation? Like a Las Vegas type of situation. Well, I don't mean, like, uh, the strip and gambling. And <laughs> I mean, like, what are you advocating? What, what, what I mean is, is like, uh, you know, kind of like a, a a semi-modern city in the middle of the desert. Type What's of interesting, situation. though, is be extremely extrajudicial. So, like, you you could run the whole gamut. You could put Las Vegas to shame. Like an ocean boat offer. type thing. Ocean boat? I mean, you know, a boat in international waters. That, that still has, you know, to yeah. answer the authorities whenever you dock again. Well, I mean, only uh, it depends on which country you're, you're flagged in. You know, uh, theoretically, you're you're just a floating piece of that country. Sure, but wherever you dock, you know, you're on their, their jurisdiction now, so you... Yeah, actually, you're, you're not. The, the boat's actually legally... Like a cruise ship? Yeah. So you're telling me if I murder someone and, like, with a Barbados flag... But I dock in the United States. The United States has no legal authority to, like, punish me for the murder of someone. Seems, I don't know how that works. I, I sincerely doubt that for some reason. Hmm. You might be right. Like, I, like, I, I agree. Like, I, yeah. That seems wrong. I wonder how that'll work. Hmm. Well, are there any questions you think I should be asking in these interviews? What was the initial question you asked me? Um, Do I think we'll go to the moon? Well, no. Uh, what, what's the future of humanity? Oh, bleak or very vibrant. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of uh, in between stuff in there. I don't think there's a lot of whole lot of in between stuff. Either you know it starts it like goes middling and then becomes very bleak, or you know goes middling and then starts trending positive. I think we we like those extremes, but life becomes more and more comfortable and. Routine. Hey, I don't know. I think you have one ambitious person that wants to end the world. You you could have the world end. Mm, yeah, yeah. We, you gotta find them and kill them. No, imprison them. No. Well, protect ourselves from them. Maybe that's the right I mean, sentiment. You know, the scientists. You know, they're more concerned if they can than if they should. If they could, then they should. Something like that. Hmm. Oh, cool. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this will be an interesting time capsule. I have to show my friends this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will wait a decade. I'll wait a decade? Yeah, I'll wait a decade. Them in a year or so. I think in a decade you'll be like, oh. I, th- I think I'll think this is interesting in like a year. You think so? I think so. I think I'll think this is interesting in like six months, actually. Oh. Like, I, I think you... You're in a high growth period. High period of change. High so. period of change? But I mean, like after you get out of college and you have like your job and you're like in that job for five, ten years. But my, know, my job will still be very intellectual in nature. Like, it's like I'll still be like forced to face a lot of different ideas. Yeah. It's like, I don't think there will ever be a time period where I won't be interested in like the way I thought. Like, I, I think like the way I think will like consistently change throughout my life. And I think the environments I'll be in will force me to do so. It's like it'll, it'll, it'll constantly of interest to like see what I thought at a particular moment. Yeah, I I mean I think a key part is as you make those changes, being able to kind of articulate, you know, did you learn something new? Did you reorganize or reevaluate the things you didn't know? You know, like what what causes those changes? You know, I mean, is it is it transformative, evolutionary, refining? You know, like the, the nature of every change especially if you go into like politics and stuff you know um yeah, being able this, to this video will be oppa research that, I, I i hope not i hope not too <laughs> imagine <laughs> the viewership your site would get this is oppa research <laughs> well you know you're not that you wouldn't be the first uh 
politician to be interviewed. Really? But I interviewed a person that's uh, running in primary for the House. Oh. Uh, Houlihan. And I interviewed a person that's running for the uh, uh, Republican uh, precinct uh, chairman. Oh, wait. For Glenlock? Uh, well, yeah, for this area. Wait, wait, what's his name? Well, you know, he didn't win. Uh, I think uh, I have to look it up, but I think his first name is Christian. Okay, because I, I worked with the winner and one of the losers at when I worked at the election. Yeah, uh, this this gentleman, um, I think he had a lot of potential, but um, the other person was already like an incumbent and had lots of support, so it would have been really difficult to no, no, I know the incumbent. Uh, see them. But I can show you. Yeah, yeah, I might know him. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, you're Bye. welcome. Bye. <laughs>